One of the most learned men in Christendom painted a disturbing portrait of this chaotic world. A senior archbishop and a consort of kings, William of Tyre wrote the history of the Crusades as he saw it. In nearly all the circle of the earth, belief had failed. The fear of the Lord no longer prevailed among men. Justice had perished from the world. Violence held sway among the nations. Fraud, treachery and chicanery overshadowed all things. All virtue had departed and ceased to exist as useless. Evil reigned in its stead. His words seemed to proceed from God and were received by young and old alike eagerly as a command from on high. The cradle of our faith, the native land of our Lord and the mother of salvation is now forcibly held by a people without God. For many years now, the wicked race of Saracens, followers of unclean practices, have oppressed with tyrannical violence the holy places where the feet of our Lord rested. Dogs have entered into the holy places. Priests have been slain in the sanctuaries. Virgins forced to choose between prostitution and death by torture. Those of you who once fought against brother and relative, now rightfully fight against the barbarians. Know then, that whoever sets out on this journey, not out of lust for worldly advantage, but only for salvation of his soul and liberation of the church, is remitted in entirety all penance for his sins. But the pilgrims rose up in a spirit of cruelty against the Jews. They inflicted a most cruel slaughter on them, claiming that the killings would be of service against the enemies of Christianity. They attacked them, decapitated many. They destroyed their homes and synagogues and even divided all the looted money amongst themselves. The Emperor Alexius was a wicked and crafty man. He played the part of a scorpion, which when met face to face is harmless, but the tail of which is barbed with a poisonous sting it is well to avoid. Tilly Jarslan, mindful of the injury done him, constantly brooded over the fact that through the Christians he had lost the excellent city of Nicaea. With all his heart he yearned to retaliate and determined to lay an ambush for his enemy. The greater part of the army, under those illustrious and splendid men, Duke Godfrey, his brother Baldwin, and other warriors devoted to God, was advancing swiftly to the aid of their brethren. More than 500 of both sexes died at this time, prostrated by suffering. Most serious of all, their trusty steeds, companions in battle, on whom their masters depended for their own safety, and whose glory should be seen in prancing hoof and gleaming teeth, gave way like common beasts of burden. The governor of the city was a Christian Armenian called Thoros. He was a feeble old man without child of either sex. He was a useless overlord. He was unable to protect his citizens from wrongs or to procure them relief from the dangers of attack from these cursed infidels. Day by day, the shortage of provisions continued and the famine grew. And as a result, a pestilence broke out among the legions in the camp, so fatal that there was now scarcely room to bury the dead. With the loss of those who had wasted away through hunger and disease, and of others who had perished by the sword, the army had diminished to such an extent, it seemed as if barely half our numbers had survived.
the entire country surrounding this city was inhabited by infidel Saracens who were cruel enemies to our people. Even within these city walls, there was scarcely a place where one could rest in security. They reduced the realm to such a state of terror that no one dared venture outside the fortifications. The more prudent of the citizens rushed to the citizens so that they might at least preserve their lives, if only for a short time. At the gate, there was such a crush of people trying to enter that because of the press of the crowd, many were suffocated and died miserably. In battle array, they fell upon our forces. It was fought at close quarters with the sword and brought death and destruction to the Christians. In punishment for our sins, the infidel conquered. An army was reduced to a very few. That day, the glorious reputation of the Franks was lost. Any rise in Saladin's power is a cause for suspicion in our eyes. He was a man wise in counsel and valiant in war. So we had great reason to fear that when Saladin had increased his empire twofold, he would rise against the kingdom with greater force and harass us more violently than ever. He was playing one day, and as playful boys do, they began to pinch each other's arms. The other boys gave evidence of pain. But Baldwin felt nothing. As he began to reach years of maturity, it became apparent that he was suffering from the terrible disease of leprosy. Impossible to refrain from tears when speaking of this great misfortune. Day by day his condition grew worse. Wearied by the sad disasters which are occurring in the kingdom so frequently, indeed, almost continually, I have resolved to abandon the pen and commit to the silence of the tomb the chronicle of events which we had undertaken to write for posterity. <laughs>